to the to the world. The dream continues to haunt me, old friend. It always starts with a journey to a distant land. find a city in flames, streets choked with corpses, unthinkable destruction, I witness senseless slaughter, brother against brother, pure hatred, and then executions, agony, suffering surrounded me until my turn comes, they burn my eyes. Break my bones. I awaken in terror. There's no one left to stand against them. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Wu Pao. So 2021 has already brought us a lot of really great games. Now we have a lot of great games coming up in the future as well, but probably one of the most anticipated games, at least for myself and for many others, is Diablo 4. We've had Diablo games to play for over 20 years now. I also started out with Diablo 1 back in 1997. Uh, fantastic games, they just built upon each other and gotten better and better and better in my opinion. And Diablo 4 kind of looks to go back to its roots. It looks to go back to D2, kind of bring back some of those characters, the play style, the really dark and gritty play uh, that we know we know and love. And I'm looking forward to this game and jumping back in to Sanctuary. So at this time, we don't have an exact release date for Diablo 4. All we do know now is that it's sometime in 2022. Of course, Diablo 4 is developed and published by Blizzard Entertainment. And the game will be released for PlayStation, Xbox, and of course, PC. So as of right now, we welcome four classes that we know of back to Sanctuary, and they are the Barbarian, the Sorceress, the Druid, and the Rogue. So the Barbarian, everyone loves the, the jump in your face, hack and slash barb. Uh, the barb can switch between weapons during combat. He's obviously a melee fighter that can use all sorts of weaponry. They have brutal efficiency up close and has the use of war cries to either instill fear in your enemies or boost your character and your party. Next up, we have the Sorceress. And the Sorceress was a favorite from D2. And of course, she can wield fire, cold, and lightning magic with devastating effects. Um, I'll never personally forget mowing down enemies with the frozen orb and just walking through dungeons and enemies at will. And next up is one of my personal favorite classes, the Druid. So the Druid is also from D2. I'm so glad they're bringing him back. Uh, the Druid can, of course, shapeshift between human, werewolf, and werebear forms, uh, each with its own strengths and weaknesses and can also harness the power of earth and use storm magics. And the final class that we know of right now that was announced at BlizzCon of this year is the Rogue class. Now the Rogue is from the original Diablo and I'm really glad it's making a comeback as well. 
Uh, it's a quick moving, uh, deadly assassin, uses a bow for ranged attacks, and also has knives and different blades to use up close with enemies. So of course, for anyone that's familiar with Diablo, uh, every class has their own unique talent tree, uh, skill points to use, and of course, the lovely loot throughout the game to outfit your character however you see fit, and really, really nail down the customization in many different ways. Uh, the game will also feature elective mode, uh, which allows players to assign skills to any button or key they want. And it looks like in D4, the skill tree is literally gonna look like a tree uh, with passive and active skills. Uh, and you can access new skills or upgrade current ones, uh, but we really don't have any final details on this just yet as they're still kind of tinkering and playing with some things. But as we move a little closer, I'm sure we'll get more information on how the skill tree, skill points, and uh, all that stuff's gonna work together. So to go along with the offensive and defensive attributes that we are familiar with, D4 is also introducing new attributes to go along with these. Uh, the new attributes are angelic, demonic, and ancestral power. So angelic power will affect the duration of beneficial effects, whereas demonic power will affect the duration of harmful effects to enemies. And ancestral power will increase the chance to apply the effects to another entity in the game. It looks like with D4, we're also getting runes and rune words back, which will allow even farther customization of gear uh, with added and boosted effects to all of our loot as well. So to change things up a little bit from what we're used to with Diablo, uh, D4 is going to be open world, meaning each region can be completed in any order and the mobs will vary uh, in difficulty based on your level or the level of the party leader. So the MMO aspect of the game will only take place in certain areas within the game. So for example, you'll only see players inside the game at certain designated areas or camps uh, for interactions, uh, also during PvP and other boss events as well. So the larger areas will show more player population as smaller zones or more remote zones will show fewer player population around you as you're playing the game. Now dungeons of course will be procedurally generated and are really separately instanced. So only you and your party members will appear there. So as I mentioned earlier, we are back in sanctuary and we will be exploring five very unique zones with different enemies and terrain from forested areas to desolate wastelands as what we'd expect. The plot has us facing Mephisto's daughter, the Mistress of Betrayal, Lilith, which uh, was summoned by a group of cultists. As it appears right now, Lilith will be the main antagonist for us to defeat, uh, but I'm sure there's going to be many, many others that she brings with her along the way. Something else that uh, D3 left out that I think everyone really, really wanted was the PvP aspect. And with D4, PvP is coming back. Uh, now, PvP, like I said, is coming back, but you do not have to participate if you don't want to. Um, but, you know, I'm excited about it. Um, what they're going to do is there are certain places within the game. Uh, for example, one is called the Field of Hatred, where players can enter the zone, uh, be flagged with PvP, and, but it will not affect the main story of the game whatsoever. And with PvP, there's always a reward and a consequence, of course. So for the reward, the player will be granted Hatred Shards to be spent on certain costumes, weapons, and mounts. However, you must first purify the shards in a PvP zone. Now, this purification process can make you vulnerable for attack from other players so it's going to be kind of tricky to make sure you purify them hatred shards but they cannot be spent until they are purified so that is the that is the bonus to pvp now the biggest consequence really uh there will be no 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 gear loss nothing like that but uh bringing back the ears from d2 we get to collect the ears from people we defeat in battle it really doesn't mean anything they're just kind of a memento to keep uh, which I think is great. I love the ear collection back in D2. Uh, I plan on having several Strino ears in my bag at all times. Now, also in these PvP zones, there will be a system in place called the Vessel of Hatred, uh, which will tag the top PvP ears in the Field of Hatred, and any player who can take those players down that are tagged can expect a handsome reward. So as I mentioned earlier, the death in the PvP environment will not cause you to lose any of your loot. Uh, you'll simply lose an ear to someone else's collection, but you'll also lose any hatred shards that you have not yet purified. So another change coming to D4 is there will be no mythic items in Diablo 4 whatsoever. Uh, we will have unique items instead, which will be distinctive looking items with class specific uh, effects. And we'll also have legendary items. Uh, they're getting kind of a big overhaul in the form of affixes to the items and certain legendary effects that may pertain to your class and may just be a general effect as well. And one thing that D3 was really criticized hard about was the colorful, uh, sometimes not scary worlds that we're faced with, which was really a stark contrast to D1 and D2. So the developers have made it a point to make sure we're well aware that D4 will be dark and gritty 
They've been moving back to more of that D2 uh, look to the game as well. Something else that the developers have really talked about is how they really want D4 to be focused on a solid co-op experience. So they're really pushing multiplayer, uh, which I personally am really glad to hear uh, as these games are just really, really a lot more fun to play and they're a lot better when playing with other people, especially your friends, you know, that you can kind of jump into a dungeon with, you can PvP with. So the fact that they're making this uh, more of a co-op based game, I think is a move in the right direction. Something else they've talked about is the use of microtransactions. So these could appear in the game as well. Uh, we're not really sure what to extent just yet, but um, that'd be something to keep an eye on for the future. Also, D4, like D3, will not have an auction house, um, which I personally enjoy that. I don't think there is a need for an auction house. I think that it makes the game more rewarding when you have to go out there and battle and get your loot the good old-fashioned way instead of just saving up a lot of money and buying something from an auction house. So it just seems to make the game more rewarding this way. So of course the game is being released for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. And I am really, really hopeful for cross-play or cross-platform play with this game. Now they've not mentioned that. Uh, they've not said yes or no. So I think the option is still out there. Uh, a couple of the developers have even said they're very hopeful for this is the words they use. So um, they have a lot of time between now and 2022 to work on this. So I really hope cross-play definitely comes into the radar. And as we mentioned earlier, of course we know what four of the classes are gonna be. Uh, we do know that there will be a fifth class. Um, no idea what that could be at this point in time. I personally really miss my Hammerden from D2, uh, but I also kind of miss my Corpse Explosion Necromancer too. So I I'm good with a Paladin or a Necromancer or both at some point in time. I think what they're gonna do is maybe give us a fifth class and then there'll probably be some uh, different expansions along the way that'll provide classes like we're used to. So D4 is definitely an exciting title, guys. Something to look forward to. Uh, of course, we also have D2 Resurrected coming up sometime in the near future. So, so if you're a Diablo fan like myself, uh, it's a really exciting times. Uh, really looking forward to D2 Resurrected and D4 also as well. Uh, but guys, leave me a comment below. Let me know what class you guys would like to see or anything that you like as far as the information that we have on D4 right now. Pros and cons, anything you want to see differently and so on and so forth. And other than that, guys, D4 is an exciting title. Looking forward to it. And I hope you guys are as well. So have a great day, guys.